Hi everybody, good afternoon and welcome to Pi Day. It's not Friday, but it is Pi Day. Uh, please excuse my voice, I am still under the weather. I am taking a lot of pills just to get through the day as we do as mums because you can't stop and put your feet up. But anyway, hopefully I won't need to uh, sneeze on camera because that would be really embarrassing. So today I am going to show you one of my secret mum tips. Uh, it is a homemade meat pie that my children love. It is filled with uh, vegetables and mints. Oh, and I've forgotten to get the mints out. That would help. Uh, so please join me in, you can tell I'm under the weather because I've forgotten half the ingredients. Join me in creating this awesome meat pie. I'll just grab my mince here. Now, just bear with me. So, this meat pie is so easy to make. It's fairly quick. Uh, I am using pre-done puff pastry. If you wanted to make your own short crust pastry, by all means do. I actually don't have a food processor at the moment, which you really do need to create a good short crust pastry. I will get one eventually. But for now, I spent $5 or whatever it was and bought my pastry. Um, this is just a basic mince and cheese pie. However, there's a few tricks that I do that number one, makes it taste really good, and number two, uh, makes my children eat it. So, let's go ahead. So I've got a couple of good tablespoons of olive oil in my electric fry pan. Doesn't really matter what you use, however, I just love my fry pan and I use it all the time. So I've got one large onion. Now, the trick is with my children, they say they hate onion and they've been eating it for years. So I just really finely, 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 finely dice or even grate that up. Where am I going to stick my dirty stuff? Uh, again with a carrot. Now my kids like carrot, but they actually don't like to see stuff in pie. So again, I've just used the same texture for the carrot and one stalk of celery. Now celery gives it a really interesting flavor without giving it too much flavor. So those are the vegetables I'm using. Now if I had the, uh, if I'd used all the head of my broccoli, I'd put the stalk in there. Um, you could do the same with cauliflower. Any vegetables that are going slightly floppy, chuck them in. Uh, basically, you kind of want the equivalent amount of say close to three cups of vegetables and the good thing with this is it will make your meat go further but it will all taste like meat so I'm just really just wanting to leave that to just saute it a bit get a bit of uh, try and cook that through a little bit and yeah we'll see how it goes so you could pop some garlic in here if you wanted to. Uh, I'd probably pop two teaspoons of garlic in there, um, which would make it easy and nice and tasty. Okay. So even I can smell that. So guys. Don't, um, if, if you've got any questions, ask me. It might help with my sick brain uh, to spark some conversation. Uh, as I said, you've got to keep going. So this is me making dinner for my family tonight. Uh, so I'm just sautéing off the vegetables. And then I'm going to add the mince, which I forgot. Uh, now this is just a basic beef mince. You could use anything with this recipe, any kind of mince. It would be really yummy with chicken, or lamb, or even venison. So hey, let me know if anybody's tried the famous pie that won the pie competition the other day. Was it a venison pie? Was I'm pretty sure it was a venison pie. I know it was in Taupo, but uh, a venison pie, and they entered last year and got eight, and this year they, yeah. One, so great, good on them. So anyone who's in Talpo or has friends in Talpo, you need to pop down and probably join a rather large queue, queue. to get the venice, the top New Zealand venison pie. So, go. 
So now I'm just going to pop in my mince. This is 500 grams of beef mince. And I'm just going to break that up a little bit because we just want to get that mince browning a little bit. We want some of the flavours to come off the bottom. Slightly burnt. Well, my mum calls it burnt meat, but it's not burnt. It's just browning the meat so that you get all those yummy meat flavours. Not that I can smell anything, but um, I know it's going to come. And I've got my pan on a, uh, a medium heat, and I've got my oven heating up to 200 degrees Celsius. Actually, if you've got a, uh, pizza, a pizza setting on your oven, that's a really good one to use for this, because essentially the middle of the pie will actually be cooked, but the, uh, the, it's, it'll be the pastry that we're cooking in the oven today. So I'm just mushing this round as it cooks. And I can start to smell that now, so that's good. So guys, don't forget to uh, follow us on Instagram at Mrs. Rogers NZ. Got some really nice pictures up there. We often do little uh, sort of stories on there that only last for a short time so make sure you check us every day so you don't want to miss one of those often i'll show you what i'm doing test runs of too we're actually live on instagram at the same time so, so my meat's just browning and i'm just wanting to break that up as it does sort of cook and brown you don't want really big chunks of mint want nice fine chunks Now this is also how I start my spaghetti bolognese, not to give away too many recipes because I won a competition, well, with friends, uh, for my spag bowl. Another one that my children eat and have no idea it's full of vegetables. So, so we've got a carrot, an onion, and one stick of celery, and 50, uh, 50, 500 grams of beef mince. Now, I don't even use sort of lean mince. I like to use just regular mince. The fat in the mince that is there comes out and it helps add to the flavour. And I'd rather use the natural oils and, and fats that exist in our food than adding other foods. But if you wanted to try it with a lean meat, you might just have to add a little bit more oil at the beginning. So if anyone's got any questions that they want to flip through about uh, what we're doing, or, or just in general, then do pop them in. I'm yeah. reading them on this side of the camera, so uh, please do just ask away. Kirsty's concentrating on <laughs> browning off <laughs> meat as best she possibly can. I know that's a little bit loud, uh, but that is cooking. And happy International White Wine Day. It's International White Wine Day, which gives you an excuse to uh, have a glass if you wish. Probably don't need too many excuses, are I? Okay. So as I said, I've got my pan on a, a medium heat. Me medium to, to hot. I just really want all of that mince to cook thoroughly and just start to brown on the bottom so that I can get the flavours. And it is smelling yum. Now, the herbs and spices I'm using today that are Mrs. Rogers, I'm going to use mustard powder and French herbs. You can change your herbs. You could use Italian herbs, you could use mixed herbs, or you can pop in the, whatever herbs you and your family like. Uh, you could certainly, you know, add quite a lot of flavor and use one of the seasons. But uh, my children have a fairly bland palate. Uh, however, this, this is tasty enough for them that I know that they'll eat the whole meal and go to bed with full bellies. So, I am now going to throw in, well not throw because that would be messy. I am going to pop in, this is my barbecue sauce, about a good tablespoon of barbecue sauce. I want a good tablespoon of 
tomato sauce and remember that's my secret I've got a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and two tablespoons of soy sauce. Now I'm I using. I think it was the Instagram crowd you were talking to about the secret, so you might want to go through that again. In, in oh yes, yeah. so these are these are my. I've replaced in my recipe. Oh, sorry, that's very messy. In my recipe, I have replaced any kind of tomato-based ingredients. So tomato paste or anything like that, I've replaced it with sauce. My kids love sauce. I know it's got a sugar content in it. Uh, however, it just really adds to it. So I use barbecue sauce and tomato sauce instead of tomato paste. So if you don't want to add that sugar element to your family's food or you're not used to having that, then by all means do it. But it just gives the pie a richness, more than I've ever been able to get with just tomato paste. So you can see it's looking nice and rich there. I'm also going to pop in my mustard powder. And I'm using two really good heat teaspoons of the French herbs. And you just want to cook that for a couple of minutes just to allow the the herbs to gel with the rest of the flavours in there. You can see what, by using the dark soy I get a really nice colour there. But if you've only got light soy, that's fine too. Now, another trick I, I use, we're using beef stock today, so you can either make your own beef stock you could use an instant beef stock if you want with just water, or you could do this. I've just got normal beef stock. And to thicken it, I am using corn flour. So the best way to not get lumps in your sauce, especially when using corn flour, I do do it with flour as well, is to add it to a cold, wet ingredient. And this way you don't get any lumps or bumps. Sue yeah. says it's a great recipe for cold days. Oh, it is. Cold winter days, as we are experiencing a lot of at the moment. Nothing less than a hot pie on a cold night. So, so that is my two tablespoons of corn flour that I have stirred into my beef stock to save my lumps and bumps. And that makes a nice body of our pie. So you just want to stir that round. Now you could use flour if you wanted to stand here for another half an hour and cook that out. However, I don't have time to do that today. Uh, and corn flour is fine. You can use it. I'm a stickler for using flour when I'm making gravies, but when I'm making meat pie, I don't have the time. <laughs> So guys, tell us what your uh, favourite pie is. Do you? This is my favourite pie, mince and cheese. Give me, give me an idea of what sort of pie you guys like the best. Every I'm, Kiwi has probably got some um, memories of Georgie pie over the years, yes. and obviously, you know, the new, well, not new now, but the ability to go and get a Georgie pie. So that's, that's my memories of a pie. The Georgie pie. Georgie pie. One dollar pies, I think they were way back in the day. Driving through the the uh, Green Lane drive through and the person who was driving ordering seventeen one dollar pies at two o'clock in the morning. Those were the days. I remember when they first were gonna close down, I think my sister bought about fifty of them and put them in the freezer. Yeah. Now, guys, now Sasha says that she, yes. loves, she loves Mrs. Rogers. Well, thank you, Sasha. And her favourite pie is a potato pop top pie. Oh, nice. Like a good old shepherd's pie or a cottage yeah. pie. And Gina says mince and cheese. Yeah, yeah. mince and this cheese. This is a mince and cheese pie we're making today. And Sue is being very fancy with a leek and chicken pie. Oh, Sue, that sounds very flash. Very flash. Right, but today I don't are, know if my children would eat leek no, and chicken. No, we're not sure if the kids are going to smash back the um, leek and chicken as much as they're going to eat today's pie. Actually, we're going to end up with two pies, aren't we? 
Okay guys, so I am just going to turn that down to a simmer. Now, I want to show you this really exciting thing. Just before you do that, Michelle's favourite is bacon and egg or steak and cheese. Oh, nice. Yeah, you could boil up some um, eggs and pop these in whole if you wanted like that Ooh. kind of a pie with this. Thanks, Michelle. Now, I'm sorry guys, I just got to have a little cough. <coughs> right, I'm back with you. Sorry about that. Okay, I want to show you this really lovely tin with enamel uh, bakeware that uh, Rogers Distributions do a line of. So I'm going to be using that today. I look for dishy. They do do it for dishy, and it is really divine. Now, as I said before, I have got puff pastry, which I bought from the shops. You cheated, but that's okay. I cheated. I'm not well. I'm allowed to cheat. So, I'm, I have uh, used a little bit of spray oil in my dish, just for caution that more than ever, and you just want to pop that in. Now you do have to muck around a bit with size and things, you're going to have to make the sheets work for you. So, no, I wouldn't roll this out anymore, but just to show you that you can join sheets of pastry and just push it together with your fingers, really get in there, it's a little bit like Play-Doh, and that way it shouldn't come apart so easily. Now, I'm just wanting to do a little bit over there, because I've got enough here. Okay, now, don't worry about the kinkles because you can never really have enough pastry. Pastry is one of the best parts. Okay, so, I'm going to pop my hot pie filling straight in. And it looks so yum. It smells glorious too. It doesn't just look good, it smells good. Now the great thing with this recipe is if you are going to do like I have, and I bought a kilo of mince, and essentially I've doubled the recipe. So I've got one to pop in the freezer so I can defrost and heat up later on, especially when I'm not feeling so well. It's good to have a little bit of a backup. Or you could make some little individual pies and take them to work for lunch, heat them up. So for everyone who's joining us now, we seem to have a couple more people turned up. We are making a mince and cheese pie. A mince and cheese pie. Which is filled with vegetables. Is filled, is filled, filled might be a, an over-exaggeration. It's about half and half. About half and half. About half so that's and not half. Bad. And I'm going to zoom in. You won't be able to see the veggies. There's no veggies. It tricks my kids and my husband. Now I've just got a little bit of egg wash here. My egg was really thick so I've, I've actually watered it down a little bit. Just a dot. So this is just getting to the fun part. I have very fond memories of watching my mum do this stage. I don't know why I was never there before this stage but I wasn't. So I just like to do three lines. You need to put the lines in because it stops your pie from bursting out the sides when it's cooking. My mum did three lines, so I do three lines. You could do five, you could do whatever you wanted. You could even get fancy pants and do little crisscrossy things. Yeah, I'm not in the mood. So, we just want to pop that on there. And I just want to stretch it a bit because, again, I'm not going to muck around too much with it. And I need a fork. How about the cheese? Oh, I forgot the cheese. Jeez, lucky somebody's onto it. You can tell I'm not well. <laughs> we were going to have a mince and cheese pie without, without the, the cheese. Without the cheese. Oh, my gosh. Um, otherwise, that's called a mince pie. But here's the... Well, yeah, the that's a mince that's, pie. That was how you make a mince pie. If you want cheese. Oh. Now, what's the secret on this? This is the secret. I don't normally Everybody use this, this cheese. This is like plastic cheese. I call it plastic cheese. But it is actually just cheese with milk. So, and I knew this would happen. So, 
this is what makes it like Georgie pie so you want about 10 slices and my other trick is is that you double it up so you want double slices so this is a double, double mince and cheese pie this is a double mince and cheese pie although the cheese has got a bit sticky in the kitchen so yeah sorry it may be a case of being a bit no, thick in look. some places oh there you go perfect and did so, you, this, was this a smoky cheese now this is a smoky cheese single that i bought that's very special but you could just use regular cheese look at that yeah. so and that makes it like georgie pie everybody that's why georgie pie is so nice because it uses plastic cheese right and back to putting this on duh it may not use plastic cheese but that's what it tastes like <laughs> yeah i don't know why i call it plastic cheese i've always called it plastic cheese you can actually make a really yummy uh cheese quick easy cheese sauce with a little bit of milk and you melt it in really good for pouring either on top of your macaroni or on top of your chips we might have to do that at some point because that is fantastic that's just because you want to eat it yes yeah okay so i am just using a fork i have fond memories of eating pies that my mum made that had these fork marks all the way around and we always used to leave the pastry part of the dinner or the pudding or whatever right to the end and I have these memories of crunching on this fork patterned pie. Has anyone else got any memories of their meal times with their family you know over the years when you grow up and have those little things that you did as a family pop them through be interesting to see. Yeah let me know let me know if anybody. Oh, wait, if Sasha would like to know she missed the start how do we hide the, how did you hide the veggies she's got a fussy eater in the family. Okay I um I grated them extremely finely. If you've got a food processor, you could whiz them up really, really fine. Uh, the other thing I've got is a, a little Tupperware whizzer, which I use a lot. Um, and yeah, it just hides it all. And because the meat is so flavorsome, uh, they just don't know. They just think it's meat pie and don't tell them there's veggies in it. The other thing you said, you, you use the stalk of the broccoli. Yeah, so you can use floppy away. vegetables. You can yep. use the stalk of the broccoli or the, the stalk left over from the cauliflower. Um, all sorts like that. So it's a really good pie for just doing, you know, l leftovers. If you've only got frozen veg, just thaw them a little bit. And whiz them up in your blender with a little bit of water and just substitute the amount of water that you use for like lessen the beef stock or use beef stock to whiz it up and just tuck them in there it's a real easy pie it was about half and half vegetables to make it's about half and half mm. about half and half so and it makes your meat go further because meat's so expensive it doesn't need to be full-blown meat uh, and vegetables give amazing flavor so yeah i'm going to pop that in the oven for about half an hour um, I am going to egg wash the top. That's how it gets really nice. And thanks for your question, Sasha. Well done. And we'll pop the recipe up um, straight away after the live. It's hard to put it up at the beginning, but um, we'll pop this recipe. Give us about ten minutes or so, and then Sasha, you'll be able to make the pie and let us know how you go. Whether you fool the family <laughs> with the veggies, <laughs> do pop a photo up. And Sasha, I use the same theory for when I'm making uh, mince for spaghetti bolognese or, uh, you know, nachos or anything like that. I use the same concept. My kids are pretty good at eating vegetables now, but, um, yeah. Every little bit helps. My husband's not so great, so that helps too. He's a bit I'm naughty, kidding. obviously. Anyway, so in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes. All you're doing is cooking the pastry. Your meat is actually cooked. So you want to cook the pastry and melt the cheese. So you could always follow the instructions on the back of your pastry if you're going to buy it like I did. Or if you're going to make it. What temperature was that? That's at 200 degrees Celsius. So. Let me, I'm just going to have to, sorry, dot my nose, everybody. I hate to do that. 
I'm going to cut up the pie next. And I'll just wash my hands. My hands have been very clean over the past few days, fighting this uh, cold that I have. Now, let's hope, because it's not like you can pre-cut pre open a pie. It's a bit like a cake. Sounds pretty good. Oh, it looks pretty good. We might be having pie for lunch and dinner tomorrow with two of these cooked. So just wanting to... Now guys, the other good thing with the pie is that if it is disastrous pulling it out, it doesn't matter. It's a pie. It's a pie. All goes in the same hole. So I'm just wanting to... That looks really good. Not squash that too much. Okay. Right, let's see if I can get this out without losing too much of it. The first piece is always the hardest. Come on, pie. I really need a skinny or something. Sorry, everybody. Just bear with me here. I really need to clean up my utensil drawer. I know. i use this. Oh cheese, oh, cheese guy. Okay. Okay, let's try and get a slice, everybody. Uh, oh, oh, I left a little bit of it back. Never mind, look. Because all you do is this. Whoa. And it's a yummy cheese, mince and cheese pie. Yeah. See, look at that. You can't even see any vegetables. And I bet you it tastes really good. You should have some. I probably should. Oh, I'll use this fork. Oh. Mmm. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can actually taste it. It's really nice. It's good. I like it. Mmm. And it looks, it looks like a large Georgie Pie pie. It does. And look at how... Yummy that. That looks. That's a rich. Mm. Give, us, give us the rundown. Okay, guys. So that's my real quick, easy, and very tasty mince and cheese pie full of vegetables. Complete meal for the family. If you wanted to serve some mashed potatoes and some peas on the side, you could. But, yeah, for those fussy eaters out there, it is uh, really really yum and that double layer of cheese just uh, makes it extra special especially for children who like cheese so guys you can buy this pie dish as well it's another uh, one of Roger's distributions uh, through the dishy brand brilliant ideal because it's tin it's so easy so oven proof dishwasher proof perfect uh, so yeah guys, that is my easy mince and cheese pie. Uh, please excuse me being unwell and forgetting things like the cheese. However, you got to see a mince pie versus a mince and cheese pie. But guys, I'll pop the recipe up ASAP uh, as soon as I can. And yeah, you may even be able to make that for dinner tonight. Let us know how you go. See ya.